about on your Facebook page. So you see me in XYZ. And what you can also do is that um, <laughs> magazine, a lot of the major magazines yeah. are usually associated with a sister TV station. So then you can approach no, the one. Uh, you can no. approach the TV station yep. and say your sister company, blah blah blah, picked up this story. You may be interested in it. Mm. And the reason that that works is because then they've already been able to see that yeah. you know how to talk to the media, yeah. and so they're not going to ask you a question. You're going, oh, I don't know, right. and freak out. Yeah. So they yeah. need they need to know that you're good talent, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to cover anything about how to deal with on-camera interviews in this presentation, or should I just leave that question to the side? Um, I wasn't, but I can. We'll, we'll just leave for the moment. Can I'll, talk. I'll make a note of it. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't yeah. cover it, yeah. Then. Yeah. Email me and okay, that'd be great. Because I've probably written a blog about. Mm -hmm. I think I have. That's a blog probably a really on. good topic. I can help, actually, I can help out with that. Yeah. Just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you can be able to. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So other opportunities are when you're launching new products and services. That's perfect time to be telling people about what you're doing. So how does this new product relate to <coughs> what is happening at that particular time? So, like, the time thing, again, mm. how, how could that, that's a really easy lead-in for you. Yeah, yeah, People, yeah. It showed that there were two sides to breastfeeding, which mm. obviously we already knew about, and anybody who's ever tried breastfeeding in public would know that there's pros and against to mm. doing that, and people are quite vocal about it, but that could have been your, um, a good opportunity for you to then put together some facts about it or something like that, or an article, or tips, or a media release, or all of those sorts of things. That's what my question was. So, a media yeah. release. Yes. Do I have to have one to contact the media? No. Thank you. That's good. Everyone keeps saying, you need a media release. I'm like, but I've got like 10 subjects that I could go to them about. It cost me a fortune. So, no, no, no. Okay. You don't need a media release. Um, the best way to contact the media is actually to present them with a few different ideas, because one might not be right, but yep. the one down the list might work well. Okay. And so if you present them with maybe three different options, yep. then they might say, oh, no to that one, and then we really like this one. And so then you can approach somebody else with the other idea. Mm -hmm. So would you recommend in an email or to call them, or both? I, most journalists prefer email. Yep. The best way to find out, um, oh, sorry, the best way to do it is to find out originally how they like to be approach okay. and then which is to ask them the question or <laughs> you can either ring the outlet you can you right. know, just ring and find out if you want to be ready or you can you can email but quite yeah. often yeah, yeah the, the receptionist well, if you if you don't yeah want to seem like you yeah yeah you don't know what you're talking about then mm. you can actually ask the receptionist yeah. or the editorial coordinator right. if it's at a media yeah. uh, like at a magazine or something like that and you can just say look i want to speak to such and such mm. who you will know because you read that publication or you've yeah. them on tv or watch them or whatever mm. what's the best way to contact them but most of the time it's email and then you can follow up over the phone or if um, if they don't like that at all, which you'll find out pretty quickly, mm. then follow up with email. But usually I email and then follow up over the phone. Yeah. How long mm -hmm. live? Depends on how, what the issue it's is. Mm -hmm. I usually email and then follow up within a few days. But if it's something that's happening right then and there and you're presenting yourself as the expert, then I would email and then call and say, I've just sent you an email. I want to make sure you've got it. And then they will look at it while you're talking to them. Mm. So the first step is just to put a few ideas in an email and say, "I'm going to work." Yeah, on if you don't want to put together a media release yeah. or so when you talk an article about giving them ideas, <coughs> are you talking about I will write a topic on this? Uh, sorry, an article on this topic, or are you talking about I have a story idea for you? Either or, okay. you can, you can say yeah. When you're putting together a pitch, a paragraph is usually enough information to get across why it's interesting yeah. and why why they should be interested in what you have to say. Yeah. If they want to know more, then they will contact you. Yeah. Or they'll respond to you. Or when you follow yeah. them up, then 
But you can say, I've got an idea for an article, it will cover this, this is who I will talk to, or this yeah. is what I'll present. Yeah. Or um, I've, I'm going to cover these seven tips or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So just give a basic outline, but don't you don't need to go story, into the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Or you, like for example, you know, like uh, this yes, is my idea. Yeah. Or yeah, I don't. Know. So I, I send them the email. Look, I think this would be fabulous. Sorry, I'm but just that's, 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 I don't have to go through who ZZ Tops is and what we're about. Yeah. I don't need to go into that. Mm. You, you should give details yeah. about that, so I'm just so asking because that's what I've been doing. doing. Like, you know, I'm answering your query or blah blah blah. This is a little bit behind me mm. or why I'm answering. And yeah. Then sign off. You need so. to establish your credibility. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, that will help to yeah. do that. And so that'll be before the pitch, before like the bullet points. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can and introduce talk. yourself yeah. and say, I'm such and such from business yeah. name. Um, I am contacting you because I'm in this industry or I want yeah. to talk about this topic. Here are my ideas for a story or um, a piece or whatever it is. It, it depends on what sort of media outlet you're covering yeah. or sorry, you're speaking to. Um, okay, so when you're putting together um, an editorial calendar, do you all use Excel documents? Mm -hmm. You can do it in Word if you're not keen on Excel. Mm -hmm. I'm not very good with Excel. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> I love it. But I use it for media <laughs> lists and contacts. Yeah. It depends on the way your brain works, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, in a paper. And so you, you will probably have a lot of these details already from your experience the other day. So you, have, you put down the name of the journalist or the editor or um, the, run the presenter or whoever it is, that, the go-to person, the producer, whoever it is that's going to be the one that you need to contact. Um, you have their email on their phone. If you know that they won't ever take phone calls, then obviously don't bother putting the phone in, vice versa with email. I wouldn't worry about fax, there's hardly anybody For takes what? faxes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so you also have the outlet name and the website. Um, you put their deadlines down. That is really, really important. Yeah. If you contact them when they're on deadline, they will not be interested in talking to you, no matter how good your story is. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you won't want to contact them again because they've said no. The reason they've said no is because they're on deadline, not yeah. because they don't like the idea. How would you find yeah. that out? Do you just ring again the receptionist and say, can you tell me when your deadlines are? Yeah. Yeah. And so you... Don't send them. Send them in between their deadlines. Is that yes. what you're saying? Yeah. So don't pitch anything to them while they're on deadline. Okay. They um. It makes them very cranky. If they're after a story, then they will be contacting you. Yeah. Okay. So can I ask a really stupid question? So if their deadline is, I don't know. Say for example, 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. So you would contact them probably in the middle of the day. Yep. With that, because you wouldn't contact them first thing in the morning and then. The other thing you can do is send them an email yeah. that comes just after the line finishes and they yeah. follow up a little bit after yeah. that. Yeah. 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 And so they'll they may see it come in but they might not have read it. They might be at the pub and oh, all yeah. of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, in. Computer off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And so if you go back to the one that you, the um, page that we were looking at before, you've worked out your ideas for what your articles or your pictures are going to be. So then you include the article subject and if you have a title for that, if you are going to submit an article. The reason I say to put all of this detail in is so when you go back and look at it afterwards, you, you actually know where it's all up to, um, who you contacted with, which um, piece or idea, and if they didn't like it, then you can pitch it to somebody else. Mm. But obviously, you start with the ones that you want to be in first, and then you work down the list. Yeah. Uh, and also, word length. If they give you specific word lengths, then put that in as well because you, you don't want to be going back over the emails or back over your notes. It's better to have it all in one central place. And then, any notes, if, if they've told you specifics about um, don't contact me, send it to this different person or only speak to us on Mondays or yeah. something like that, put that all in a notes form and that way you can refer back to it. 
And once you've got that sort of thing set up, then you can keep adding to it over the year, and then you look back next year, and you've already got all of that content there, and then you can just rejig a few of the things, and so you've already done all that hard work, and that will be invaluable to you when when you're at the point where your business is going really well, when and you don't have time for all of that sort of stuff. And maybe you can even hand it over to somebody else if you're at that point. You can say, look, I've done all of this research. These are the ones I want to target. And then this is what this is what I want to work on now. And we want to receive coverage on these three topics or something like that. Because you, you, will, just, you will have decided what the topics are that you want to be known for if, you, if you're establishing yourself as an expert. I know that Renee was talking to you about that this morning. And so that will help you with that. Um, so, I'm going to talk a little bit about a media list now. I don't know how many of you have done this. I thought it might be relevant to putting together the editorial calendar as well. So, how many of you actually work off a media list? Or do you just, you just contact What's that? me as it comes yeah. up? Okay. So, that's good. I'm glad I put that in there. <laughs> Okay, so when you're putting together a media list, these are the sorts of things that you should be thinking about. You should always have your local media because you're always talent in the local area. Okay. And that could be the local radio station, it could be the newspaper, there might be a lifestyle magazine that comes out with the newspaper once a month or once a quarter or something, then it can be that as well. There's lots and lots of different things and you'll know who this is because it'll be the one that, that you have delivered to your door or the one that you listen to when you're picking up the kids and those sorts of things. So that that should be your first your, your first point when it comes to media. Next is um, your industry or any associations that you belong to or any networking groups that you're a member of. If any of those have their own publications or media outlets or they're affiliated with any outlets, then you should have them on your list because if you're a member, then they're more likely to consider you above somebody who isn't a member who is pitching a similar sort of story. And so then that's that's really a no-brainer to them because they, they're able to help their membership, that's part of their job, and to you it means that you're providing them with the story and you're the one who's getting the coverage. Um, in your, your industry, the graphic design industry, for instance, there's lots of different magazines, there's mm. lots of blogs, lots of websites all devoted to it and so you would have favourite ones that you look at so you should be including them in your media list as well and if if you um, are following industry trends then you'll probably have all of those things so you'll know who the editor is, you'll know who the journalists are because you, you'll be, be in the front cover of um, the magazine or it'll be on the blog that you read. Uh, and then any extra market sectors that you might reach into so you have your basic industry, but you might also cover fashion or there might be some business or there might be something to do with hospitality. And so you can come up with different angles on your business. See, so you were talking about um, lifestyle, like home living sort of stuff. But you can also do parenting stuff you can do photos of babies. And so there's, they're very distinct. And so you can do different pictures to make it the cover of those areas. Uh, and then obviously business media, because you're running a business, so you, you can provide your business as a case study for um, articles that are coming up, or you can talk about an issue that you've overcome in your business and that might be able to help others. And so, for instance, um, one of my clients is a bookkeeper and she does lots of stuff in the cloud because she uses an iPad and goes from client to client. And so you, she talks a lot in the media about how you actually operate like workflow solutions for cloud-based businesses. She doesn't talk about accounting and bookkeeping. Yeah, she talks yeah. about how she solves that problem with her clients. And so that opens up other opportunities for you as well. Does anyone have any... I'm, just, I'm sorry, I'm trying to... I hope I'm not um, no, no, bombarding no. you too no, much. I'm trying to make sure that I cover everything. Um, does anyone have any questions about media lists? Yeah. When I, you just said like your local um, journalists and things. Yep. I know which publications I 
would like to be in. Mm-hmm. Or, um, are there then sections within those that yes. I need to be right? Yes. So how do I find it? It's a call. A or call, or you get a copy, or look at it on the website. Yeah. Quite a lot of newspapers have online, mm. and and also magazines. Mm. Like almost all media is online now. So if you see the sections that are covered online, quite often they're replicated. I, I don't mean exactly the same stories, yeah, but yeah, they, yeah. they cover yeah. the same sections, the sections. Yeah. across both media platforms. Mm-hmm. And so before you said about an editorial coordinator, yes, like if you can get in on them and say, hey, I'm, I fit in here and I'd like to be, then they'll point you in the right direction? Yep, they or? will. They're really, really helpful. Basically, they're junior journalists. Yeah. And so it's their job to um, get the information. They, they're the person that's usually at the end of the generic email address and then they farm it off to the the section editors, mm-hmm. and so they're the person that you need to talk to because they have the most up-to-date information. Right. Yeah. And the friend. <laughs> yeah. <That's right. laughs> and they usually, they have far more time than the editors do. Yeah. yeah. And they're far more willing to talk to you as well. Mm-hmm. And if, if they, if you give them a good story that they can then present in the editorial meeting, then that's going to make them look good. Mm. Yeah. Are they in the local papers as well? Do they editorial coordinators? Are they usually in the local? Not usually, okay. but there there's quite often a junior journalist. Yeah, and they still have to come up with story ideas yeah. too. So it's the same deal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Their email addresses are online as well. Yes. How quickly should we expect a response before we know it's the last mm-hmm. cause with that? Potentially, you may not receive yeah, a response, but this is when follow up is important. Yeah. 